Okay, we're back live at uh, VMworld 2012, day two of continuous wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is siliconangle.com. TV operation. We were out to the events and we extract the signal from the noise. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org and we're here with Mark Egan, who's the CIO of VMware uh, and a long time uh, CUBE guest. I think it's the third time you've been on and uh, appreciate it. Good, okay, good seeing you again. You. Thank you, appreciate the time. So, uh, so who'd you think was the best demo this morning? The best <laughs> demo? Oh, you liked them have, all, right? <laughs> we have some really good partners here. I think they all did a fantastic job. Good political answer. Yeah, that was fun this morning. And uh, Chad Sackett, who just left the stage, can't believe he didn't win. He thinks it was rigged. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, last year you know, we talked about, uh, we always like to call this the, the drinking your own champagne. We used to call it the dog fooding segment. And then uh, Oliver Boosman, the CIO of uh, SAP said, no, let's call it the champ drink your own champagne <laughs> segment. It's so the uh, Europeans, Dave. We <laughs> <laughs> just let Google eat their own dog food. You know, not, uh, not us, it's right, all about. Uh, so, uh, so what's new, what's going on inside of, uh, of VMware, and you know, how's the journey going? Oh, it's, it's very exciting. Um, you know, one of the uh, you know, things that we've done over the last year is really move all of our, um, you know, our applications into the cloud. It's been a, it's been a, a great experience for us. So, um, you know, we've, um, you know, we've been using our products, you know, from the beginning to the end, you know, through uh, setting up a catalog, through the whole development life cycle, you know, running and, and, uh, and managing those. So it's, it's been really great for us. You know, we've, um, you know, been using, you know, the products that are shipping now, we've been using them at uh, VMware, you know, for, for some time now. So it's really great to see those ship. And, you know, my, uh, my team, uh, you know, spent quite, quite, uh, quite a bit of time with the R&D group, you know, just in terms of, fine-tuning some of these things, so it's, it's great to see them all ship. So, I, we'd like to talk to CIOs about you know, the whole IT transformation topic. Um, particular, in particular, CIOs at technology vendors seem to be, I mean, they're, all CIOs are undergoing a transformation, but CIOs at technology companies seem to be more heightened, have heightened awareness of it. Now, maybe that's because you've got marketing people whispering in your ears, IT transformation, but when you think about uh, transformation, um, I mean, IT as a service comes to mind. You, you mentioned service catalogs, and that's the direction that most organizations are headed. Do you feel like you're there? Well, I, well, I think what you want to do when you when you go on the journey is really look at it holistically. You know, from a people, process, technology perspective, and I and I would argue that the people side is the hardest. You know, you know, do you really have the right staff in place that are ready to you know embrace some of these new technologies? So one of the things that we did at, uh, at VMware was really look at our, our organization, you know, and, and there's some skills that you're going to need in the, um, you know, in this new world that you may not have. I mean, you know, architects, you know, can, can someone, you know, really architect this where, you know, some of your infrastructure will be on premise, you know, in a private cloud, uh, some of it will be in a public cloud, but it's much, much different, you know, as, as you go forward. So I think that's, that's a key thing. And, um, you know, we spend a great deal on training. You know, just making sure that our staff are, you know, up to speed on the latest skills, and we set up two paths at VMware. There's a technical path where you don't really have to get into management, so you can get up to a senior director role by, um, you know, by staying in that technical path or the management path. But I think in, if you really look at, at um, you know, that journey, you know, really embracing some of this, I would encourage everybody to look at your organization. Do you have the right people? Have, do you have to make some adjustments there? Getting the processes in place, you know, because processes like brakes on a car, you have that to go faster, not slower. And then finally, there's a technology. And you know, I work for a technology company. We have lots of brilliant engineers that make these products. But I would argue that that might be some of the easier things are the technology, but you've got to get that organization sorted out. Yeah, people tell us that their biggest challenge in terms of moving to IT as a service is the organizational issue, uh, and just even the mindset of moving toward, you know, whatever it's called, whatever you want to call it, cloud, IT as a service. So, my specific question is, how, how do you, speaking particularly about the process side, how did you align your technology, your people, and your process? What process did you use to do that? Yeah, yeah well what we, what we did is we actually broke off a team and we took the best IT folks in my, um, in my organization and we, and we formed a project team, we called it uh, VPRED. And we, um, and we gave them the challenge is that we want to run all of our uh, business in a private cloud. And um, you know, and, and this this team was uh, chartered to do this, you know, by uh, in a relatively uh, sh short time frame. So um, you know, I, I met with them, like uh, you know, periodically, just checking in with them and so forth. But um, you know, that was that was part of it. Is that I think the the um, there's a lot of change going on, and the human nature is to resist change. 
So what we, rather than trying to get the whole organization and tr to, to move to a new model, we just broke off a group and we formed this team. And then what we're doing is that we're proliferating through the rest of the department what we've learned on this, on this journey of moving to, to the cloud. Mark, I want to ask you about um, the Drink Your Own Champagne. Obviously you guys are uh, virtualizing and everything else. So two questions. One is, um, are you using a lot of Cloud Foundry like internally to pass platform as a service? Um, and two, yesterday we talked about new experiences, um, old way, new way. So can you share um, some of the new experiences you've rolled out in your infrastructure that are really cool, that you really like, this is kick butt, I love this, this is great, we did this, it's kind of one of the cutting edge disruptive areas. So first, Cloud Foundry, are you playing with, are you working with it internally, is it part of your deployments or POCs? And then two, new experiences have you rolled out that was just like, wow. Or you say, what well, didn't work, or you know, whatever your choice. Yeah, we're act we actually are uh, using Cloud Foundry. You know, it's it's nice to have uh, you know a platform you know set up for you. About, and um, you know, one of the things is that we did with Cloud Foundry is we actually developed a mobile app. You know, for our uh, you know for our customers, which is uh, related to a uh, system we call My VMware. And um, one of the really cool things that we did at uh, at VMware is that we looked at the um, you know our customer experience. You know, all the way from um, evaluating our products through purchase our products through support, and um, what we wanted to do was recreate that experience for um, you know for VMware, and we used our uh, vFabric tools. So um, you know, through a, a, you know a, a, an effort with um, you know our, our business partners, we, we redesigned this and we went live in uh, in April. You know, of, uh, with uh, with my VMware, you know, a couple of things that we uh, we did there is is that um, you know we were able to really shift how we did business with our customers. We wanted to take an approach where we worked from an enterprise, you know, enterprise and in, 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 um, at VMware because if you if you know some of our uh, historically we did a lot of work with consumers, so we wanted to, to operate from from an enterprise perspective, and um, and then we wanted to make sure that the experience that they have was consistent. And um, you know some of the statistics there is that we have uh, over 40,000 unique visitors a day, you know, to our site, and um, the uh, and we were able to move much much faster. So as opposed to using some of the legacy tools, uh, in the early uh, uh, release of uh, you know my VM, where we were making changes every day, so we would add new functionality on a daily basis, and then we backed off when we have multiple releases today. But if I look at some of the legacy tools that were out there, I couldn't have done it in that kind of time frame. I wouldn't have been able to provide that, that better experience because I think what we have as IT professionals, is how do you bring a more consumer experience into the enterprise? You get a lot of these applications, they have these Soviet air interfaces. So that what we need to do is have something like Facebook or Twitter, no training, no manuals and so forth. So we have this great experience but then we're able to change it on a rapid fashion. Yeah. So, um, you know, we don't think about a release that we're going to do in 90 days. We're going to think about how many things are we going to do this week? How can we rapidly add new functionality so to our applications? Rapid, rapid release cycle. Absolutely. So the question I want to um, ask you, or and I'll share with you some data that we've uh, discovered in, in our SiliconANGLE Wikibon research, and then ask you a question around it. One is we've seen the emergence of um, two core constituencies in the IT, under the CIO or IT, uh, um, stewardship, and that is obviously the IT professional. That's the classic guy, you know, we know about. But now data scientist and analyst has become much more of a critical role because of big data. They're coming in and being much more of an active participant in the planning of rolling out new experiences in IT. So can you, the question is, what do you see as the agenda to introduce new, what new services can a CIO roll out with this new environment, this new era of the infrastructure, the data center, where there, there's a need for services. So what I'm trying to get at, old way, new way. What new way, uh, new things can a CIO roll out today that might not have been on their radar 24 months ago? That is legit, that is locked down, solid. Well, I think with, um, with big data, you're able to tap into a lot of information that you might not have had in the past. So, so think about it, um, you know, structured data, I think we have, you know, warehouses and business intelligence and so forth, but there's an enormous amount of data that's out there, you know, that's, uh, that's available in, in more of a um, less structured format. 
So I think that uh, my, my um, you know, kind of challenge to my peers there are, you know, what are all these interactions that you have with your customers on the web, on Facebook and Twitter? How do you take that information in a more real-time fashion and use it to drive your business? And that's what really, you know, the power of, of big data and putting these applications in, in place as opposed to a BI where, you know, data warehouse, which is really looking in the rear view mirror. Based on all this structured data that we've collected, let's do something over the next month or two. So Chad Don't Second have calls, the time. Chad Second was referring that as scale out analytics. That's legit. I mean, real time dashboards are pretty hot right now. Absolutely. And, and you feel they're pretty solid from a CIO perspective. Those are, that's safe territory to forge into today with, with technology. Absolutely, I, I think it's required. I mean, I think that we just have to move much, much faster. You know, as IT just doesn't have the time. I mean, we can't do things in, in 90 days or 120 days. <laughs> we need to think in days or weeks. You know, the, uh, you know as someone who's been in the, the, the tech business since the, in the 80s and watching all the different vendors and technology cycles, it kind of always kind of weaves around and kind of swings back and just kind of new, new stuff, smaller, faster, less expensive. Um, but now we're swinging back to a real conversation around multi-vendor. Not just multi-vendors, a lot of vendors in an environment, true interoperability. So uh, share with us your vision of what's the current state of that internally, because what, what what's in being enabled is massive amounts of faster deployments, but yet still the vendors, still multiple vendors in these, in these environments. H how has the multi-vendor equation changed from a CIO's perspective, or has it changed? I, I would look at that in, in two areas. I mean, we, we talked about the software defined data center, you know, at, at um, you know, at, at VMworld this week, and what it's going to enable, uh, you know, IT professionals to do is that if you look at what's happened to compute in the past, if you apply that to storage and you apply that to network, you can operate this all with software, and you can move much, much faster. So in in those in those cases, I mean, you're going to you're, you're going to look at pools of resource as opposed to individual technologies or vendors. So I think that's all good because where we as IT professionals add the value is in the applications. That's where we can help you know, increase revenue, reduce cost, improve customer sat. And I think what you're finding there is that you're, you're, um, you had the, the ERP vendors where I'm going to get some, everything from a single vendor, and I don't think that's going to happen as we go forward. I think you're going to have multiple vendors that you work with, and then you're going as, as an IT professional, you're going to have to decide if I can buy a service, I'll buy a service because it's fast. I can get that up in place. If I have to buy a package, I'll buy a package, and I'll only build when I need to. But we've got to integrate all these. So I think in, in that multi-vendor yeah. world that you're talking about, there will be more as opposed to less application with vendors. With the caveat that, uh, first of all, I totally agree with that statement. Um, with the caveat that it actually can be deployed fast and there was value. Long on the days of the eight month release cycle of rolling out, you know, the consultants rolling in and deploying you know, proprietary software. Or maybe it's a couple of months versus, depending on the scale. Oh, it's speed. You've got to go fast. I mean, to, to give you an idea of VMware, I mean, because of the, you know, the great technology that we had, you know, last year we had a $75 million portfolio. We had 36 programs. We did 81 releases and 89% were on schedule. I couldn't have done that at another company. So by having all this great technology, I can go much, much faster and 80% of our programs are on growing the business. So it's all about you know, programs for our sales organization, our marketing organization, and so forth. That's where we're focused. So that's you're talking about the project portfolio, right? The pro yes. Uh, are you, you experimenting you with DevOps at all? Uh, what we've done is we've done more around the Scrum and Agile mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, development. So, so the team is looking at how do we very quickly get prototypes up so that we learn from them and we adjust. So that's what we've been focused in on. Um, you know, like my VMware had a lot of elements of that. Once we went live, we were constantly, you know, adding new functionality there. As far as the uh, the DevOps, uh, we haven't deploy, you know, implemented that at, at VMware, but it's certainly something that we'll be looking at. Yeah. Okay. okay so that's, uh, that's not out of the question to bring the operational oh, and the application absolutely. development role. My final yeah. question: We got the next guest coming up. Uh, yeah. Is um, congratulations, by the way, on all your success last year. Uh, you, it's great to hear the same success the previous year. Doing great. Um, going forward, next 12 months, Mark, what's on your agenda for the internal? How, what are you going to build on? What are you going to double down on? What are you going to kind of evaluate? Can you share with the audience 
um, your agenda for the next 12 months? I mean, with give, not giving away any proprietary secrets, but in general, um, your mindset of doubling down, what are you doubling down on? What are you kind of evaluating? What's kind of even keel? Yeah, well, if I, if I kind of separate it into different areas, I mean, from a, um, you know, from the cloud area, you know, what we want to do is really move to that software-defined data center so that I can, um, you know, move much, much faster and be more agile. So that's, that's my, my priority there. On the application space, I think the challenge for us is, is just to bring that experience. How do I improve that experience, uh, you know, to my business partners and get that, you know, that kind of consumer experience, uh, you know, that we, uh, that we offer. And um, so some of the applications that we have, I'll call them more legacy ones, we're going to be looking at those very closely, mostly in the customer facing area, you know, because we want to help grow the business. And then finally on the end user uh, area, um, you know, we talked about Horizon here. But you know, we've, we're deploying that where you can think of it as an app store. And uh, it, it's device independent, you have a portal, you're very familiar with that, and then you can run all your applications. So um, you know, those are some of the things that we're, we're focused on in, in the coming year. Okay, Mark Egan, the CIO of VMware, always on the cutting edge, obviously they are cutting edge, obviously virtualization, they own the enterprise with the, with the hypervisor and the VMware product suite expanding, growing, multi-vendor, that's the big theme, you guys are thinking big and you're actually deploying it internally. Uh, I don't want to say the guinea pig for the technology, but you're actually deploying it in a way that's uh, positive and uh, kicking the tires, so congratulations. Uh, we'll be right back here at theCUBE with our next guest right after this short break. Great, thank you. Good job, thank you.